So, ladies and gentlemen, have you ever wanted to be on an island in Bora Bora, enjoying the sun, having a lovely time within the place? Well, today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be doing a lecture series on this channel where I'm going to be teaching you all the tips that I have learned throughout crypto. Now, it's worth mentioning at the very start of this video, I am not a financial advisor, and to make sure to do your own research as well as listening to what I'm saying as well. But what I have been doing is I have been involved in crypto and stocks for the good part of six years and I picked up a lot of tips I've made a lot of mistakes that I've learned from and I want to bring you all the videos that I can to make sure that you are educated in this space because it's a very competitive market and it's something you definitely need as much knowledge as possible in with that being said ladies and gentlemen if you can please remember to support this series by clicking that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new and with that being said let's jump straight into the lecture room so the main premise of this series, ladies and gentlemen, is going to be short form content. And when I say short form, I don't mean like 30 seconds. It's probably going to be around eight to 10 minute videos, but it's going to be broken up to allow you to sort of process the information and for you to look into it yourself as well. So today, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be firstly talking about cryptocurrency as a whole. And what is it? Because before I can go into detail, it's important for you to understand exactly what crypto is, what it represents, and why it can be very good for you, but also have risks associated with crypto. So let me say, ladies and gentlemen, let's jump straight into this. Now, I decided to use BBC because uh, it's British Broadcast Network, for anyone who didn't know, or British broadcast corporation and today they have actually released something about cryptocurrency we're one today but it was a while ago but they was talking about crypto and what it actually represents so this is uh, the main definition of what cryptocurrency actually does and is so the first thing you need to know is what cryptocurrency is now a cryptocurrency, as you can see here, simply put, cryptocurrencies are digital currencies or digital money. They don't exist physically like the coins and cash people use in day-to-day -day life, um, but, they, but instead they are completely virtual. So what I mean by that, ladies and gentlemen, is they are basically digital assets that you own. Now, within that digital asset, you have a set amount of currency that you buy within an exchange. Maybe you do it through a swap, for example, if you're using a hot wallet. But basically, what a cryptocurrency actually is, is it is a digital asset. So you can actually see it. It's not liquid. You know, it's not like cash that you can just withdraw out of a bank. Well, at least not yet. I think that that could happen at some point. But obviously, that's going to be well into the future for that to actually happen. But what it does do, ladies and gentlemen, is it is a digital asset that you own. It's like any stock, any Forex that you may own. The only difference is, obviously, a cryptocurrency is a digital asset. Whereas, obviously, Forex, you actually have like cash that you're sort of trading with and put into different currencies you know for example i could put gdp into yen for example um, in japan um and obviously a stock you're actually investing in a share within a company now crypto is very similar to forex like it's a similar premise however you're actually investing in a digital asset and not a currency of another country so how would you really think about this and how would you trade a digital asset that isn't actually associated with a country or an economic structure now the main thing that you have to think about is the market cap of said coin now what i mean by market cap is the the, the total amount that's currently inputted within a coin and also you have to look at things like community engagement you have to look at the sort of hype that's generated around crypto because the thing that's deceiving about crypto is crypto is just one massive hype train basically and i don't mean that it's just gonna like hype up and then leave again because that's definitely not going to be the case but what it is is it sort of amplifies what's going on. So you, you'll see people saying, oh, I've invested X amount into Bitcoin. Now, what that actually does is it creates a bit of a snowball effect. Like, oh, I've made $20,000 from investing in Bitcoin back in 2011 or whatever it was. And people look into that and they'll be like, oh, wow, they made that much money. How about I go into that as well? And that's when you sort of create that snowball effect. That's when you need to try and find those sort of snowball trends before they actually happen. And that is how you can become successful in crypto. So for example, in the altcoin industry, obviously altcoins are popping up left, right and center. There's so many scams out there. So be very, very careful with what you're investing in. But if you find an altcoin very early that has a good team behind it, has a good sort of, have, have good people behind it, 
you can make serious amounts of money because you can get there before the hype train actually starts. And that's the beauty of investing in a seed investment. The only issue is if you invest in the wrong coin, you can obviously lose all your money as well. So it's a high risk, high reward trading. But if you are going to be investing in actual solid cryptocurrencies and more stable cryptocurrencies, um, you can do it through any crypto exchange. You can use your Coinbase's, your Binance's, your OKX's, um, your Crypto.com's, you know, those sort of places. Um, actually, I'm not sure. Probably not Crypto.com now after the whole uh, <laughs> SBF thing but yeah you, you can use a lot of different exchanges and you know you can actually trade um your your money for a cryptocurrency and have a digital asset on an exchange um so yeah you can definitely do that as well in the description as well i do have a mexc account link um affiliate link so make sure to go check that out because uh they're actually a really good platform and i've used them a fair bit as well and they are pretty good when it comes to like trading cryptocurrencies and getting digital assets as well but th the main thing that you need to know is the digital currency what it is what it represents and it actually when you when you're talking about a digital asset the main thing that it represents is the fact that it can go up in value now it's like holding a coin for example so say like i wanted to hold a shilling back when the penny wasn't a thing right <coughs> so i would have a shilling that would actually go up in value over time. Now, I'm sure if I held said shilling for 100 years, that shilling would be worth a lot more. Now, I'm not saying hold a cryptocurrency for 100 years, because obviously there's no point, because you won't be able to use that money then um, within your lifetime. But what I would say is you could hold it for like 10 years, for example, and it could go up in value. But this is the whole thing. You have to speculate to accumulate, and that is the whole premise of crypto. So yeah it's, it's, a, it's a little bit of a different sort of style to trade in than what you will with forex or stocks because within those sort of more stable investing methods i'd say um there's a lot more there's a lot better indicators to suggest what's going to happen with the price and also the external factors are a lot easier to see so for example um with a stock you could get a hedge funder that invests within a stock um and you know you, you'd be able to see that like actually just like as soon as that happens and you'd be able to see oh you know for example citadel was invested in amc um okay so that means that amc they, they must see something in amc and the price will probably go up at some point it's that sort of thing you need to try and understand uh, within stocks but in crypto because everyone has their own sort of hashtag their own like sort of number scheme number slash letters you know the the crypto wallet addresses that's because it's very difficult to be able to decipher who owns what. And that's also a sort of advantage in crypto because it means that everything is anonymous. Um, but the only thing that it does stop as well is accountability. So if someone does, for example, decide to rug pull you, um, by rug pull, I mean basically wipe the floor with you and make sure that you, you can't sell out of a project or they withdraw all of the funds or the liquidity, you, you, unless they actually have stated what their wallet address actually is in person, you will not know because there's so many different wallet addresses out there on the market. And that is the, the very tricky thing to decipher within crypto. So right now, we are currently looking at the largest blockchains currently within the crypto market. And that is total value locked when it says TVL, by the way. Um, so right now, uh, you can see the market cap currently for the ERC20 network or the Ethereum network is currently the biggest blockchain at the moment by quite a large quite a considerable margin actually um then it would probably be the bsc uh the bep 20 network uh the bsc um if anyone doesn't know that is a uh, bnb or binance um smart chain and as well tron as well so the trx the tron 20 network um again that's also another big network the polygon network matic and the new one that's actually popped up is arbitrum and that's sort of um it, it's like a more efficient ethereum or the erc20 network but it hasn't been quite discovered yet and it's a very interesting network actually it's definitely one which i have been exploring quite recently actually and i have seen quite a considerable change with that and the fact that the gas fees are so much lower than what it is on ethereum is really really good actually the only thing that i would say say though is obviously 
if a coin is launched on the Ethereum network, you can't then buy it on the Arbitrum network. It just doesn't work like that. You can only buy a coin set on the specific network. So for example, I couldn't buy a BEP20 coin through the ERC20 network. I'd have to use the BEP20 network. However, the BEP20 network also has low gas fees, so that is also a positive. But yeah, that's essentially what you have to decipher, really, when you're investing in crypto. And this very nice uh, this very nice pie chart up here sort of shows uh, the best exchanges currently. Now, I'm actually quite surprised that Tron is above BEP20. I always thought that BEP20 would be the second behind Ethereum. Obviously, you can see that the ERC20 network holds a massive percentage of the current like um, transactions within crypto. Um, I'm, I'm actually surprised how low the Solana network is, because I always thought that Solana network is one of the bigger ones, but... Uh, there we go you learn something new every day even i'm learning that's this is the thing you know i've been doing this for about six years and i still don't know everything i learn as i go as well and that's the beauty of crypto is the fact that everything keeps moving everything keeps keeps pushing forward and it gives you different looks every single day and it means that you're absorbing new new knowledge and you have to try and get on things very very quickly if you are to make, be profitable within crypto so the other thing I wanted to talk about is also the protocols. Now, the protocols in crypto, I've managed to find a website which sort of explains it pretty well. So protocols are the foundation of any blockchain-based platform um, because they enable collaboration between particip participants. They are essentially rules that facilitate the structured sharing of data between different computer systems. Blockchain protocols drive the creation of value with crypto tokens. Now, the way that I'm going to explain this, ladies and gentlemen, is that a protocol is like a network or like an email network. So, for example, if you have an email address within Gmail, for example, and you wanted to send an email to someone who is on Outlook, you'd be able to do that because it, they share the data between each other and it means that they ping from address to address, essentially. And that's what a protocol is. That's trying to put it into ordinary terms for you to understand what a protocol actually is. And... um what is a protocol in everyday language let's see so protocol means a set of rules the term has a similar meaning in the word of technology and crypto but it refers to something a little more specific in crypto or any other information technology system protocols are the rules that govern data sharing between computer systems these protocols are basically basically rules that help define users send and receive information on the network and that's why if you ever have going to like bitcoin mine it for example um bitcoin mining is essentially just doing calculations like your gpu doing automatic calculations and what that does is it accumulates over time and that's why the better gpu you have the more money you're going to accumulate doing bitcoin mining or erc20 mining whatever you want to mine that is why that, that, that's why that is really um, and last but not least ladies and gentlemen i always talk about the risks associated with investing in cryptocurrency because it's so so important that you know this before i get on to the more in-depth stuff in the future on this channel so the risks associated with investing in cryptocurrency are as follows so loss of capital that's a given it's high risk high reward you can gain a lot of money but you can also lose all your money so you have to be very careful i always have a motto only put in what you can afford to lose so don't put in don't put in your life savings just put in a, an amount which you you can sort of say well if it goes up happy days if not it's not going to break me you know what i mean that sort of thing uh government regulations so again uh the government regulations as crypto is becoming more paramount in day-to-day -day life governments are setting higher regulations and more strict regulations on how they are traded now for a lot of projects that is going to play in favor because the good projects out there are going to be within the rule set however there will be some which may cause a loss of capital for you because that they will get yanked basically off off the blockchain so government regulations are highly important obviously fraud as well that is a big one um we saw the whole uh sign bankman free thing um you know stealing a lot of customers money on crypto.com um you have to be very careful on crypto because there are a lot of bad actors there's a lot of people who want to take from you there's a lot of people who want to hack you it's a it's a very very dangerous place to be in lead on to the topic of hacks hacks are also another big risk associated with crypto especially if you have a hot wallet now i always like 
like sort of recommending to people to use cold wallet so what i mean by cold wallet is putting your cryptocurrency on a usb drive that only you have access to because otherwise if you have a hot wallet people can potentially guess your seed phrase or what happens is they will send you a link you click on that link you'll download some malware and then they'll be able to find your your like sort of credentials to get onto your crypto wallet and they will just wipe every single bit of money that you have so you have to be so so careful with the risk associated with cryptocurrency the only reason i know about that hack is because it unfortunately happened to me and i lost about it wasn't too much luckily but it was a considerable amount it's about 250 dollars that i lost um so that's why you have to be so so careful with what you what you do uh, price validity as well so the volatility of prices within crypto are exponential um Obviously, if you invest in more stable currencies like your Bitcoins, your Ethereums, the price deficit isn't going to be as much because of how big the market cap is. However, if you're investing in low market cap coins, you are going to see those 100x plays, but you're also going to see those minus 100x plays. You know what I mean? Like, you have to be so, so careful out there when it comes to the price volatility. Um, but that means that one, when you invest in a coin, you have to be very alert. You have to be watching it a lot to make sure that the price is going in the direction that you want it to cyber theft so again very similar to hacks um people can obviously steal your money um and also as well create things like rug pulls and things like that you have to just be so so careful and that also comes into the category of scams and fraud just so you'll know um central decentralization so the the beauty of crypto at the moment is the fact that it's decentralized it doesn't belong to a government however that is also a risky thing as well because it means that it's unregulated currently um well highly unregulated there are more regulations coming in now but the thing is because it's decentralized it does not belong to anyone and that's when it could get very very risky now i know um for example great britain are creating a bitcoin um i don't know how that's going to go that's going to be interesting um and i think they're going to try and move a lot of the british citizens onto bitcoin instead of going on to binance and stuff um or they're going to have bitcoin through through binance i don't know how it's going to work personally um but it's definitely something to read up on because it could be a big game changer within space at the moment a uh, low liquidity so yeah if, if you're investing in a coin i will get i will do this a lot more in depth in the next episode on this channel um because i'm going to be talking about you know how to identify a scam things like that but yes low liquidity is a, definitely one of those things um because it means that people can't actually sell out of a coin properly or or they they won't get as much money as they thought they would because of how low the liquidity is which is essentially the safety net for a coin in case things go south uh legal and regulatory uncertainty again that just sort of comes into the likes of decentralization really um there is not really much regulation or um like legal legal repercussions to people unless you get caught super red-handed um and you know then you could get done for fraud etc um but the majority of people who do scam unfortunately don't get prosecuted and it's a it's a really big issue within crypto at the moment uh human error again you can accidentally make a make an make an error with the crypto so for example I'm, I'll, go, I'll use this example i was making a transaction probably back about a year and a half ago when crypto was going absolutely boom um actually maybe probably about two years ago actually when crypto did that massive boom and i actually accidentally spent 150 dollars on one transaction as the transaction fee like i wasn't really looking i was just sort of pressing yes without actually looking at the price of the gas fee and yeah i found out afterwards i paid way too much than what i probably should have done but it's that sort of thing you know sometimes when you're investing in crypto you just have to be super alert of what's going on so that's definitely something which you'll need to do as well income taxes so depending on what government you're with for example in the uk you have to fill out a capital gains form um but i'm not sure where what it is in the us but you will have to fill out some sort of income form to pay tax on um some of your crypto earnings if you have made money if you made profit you'll have to declare that profit um as part of your income so with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that is the first lecture room for crypto. I hope this video was informative. I've, it's been a while since I've properly made a video on this channel. Um, so please bear with me. I know this is probably a little bit all over the place, but I'm trying to get back on the ropes again. I'm trying to get back on the ladder, trying to grow again the channel. And I hope this is informative for you. And I hope that this is going to help you in some way, shape or form. With that being said, have a fantastic rest of your day. Now, see you in the next video. 
on the channel. Take care, everyone.